Writing, not sleeping. Uh, there, there is something called a greater concourse plan. It's some years ago, it's no longer valid. What I can say well, is. Well, why is it on a petition well, well, then? Where's it going? There are no current plans for anything at the West Coast. So we've just spent nearly half a million pounds. Preparing the room on the spot. So, what's this doing in West Kirby? Well, that isn't a council document, it's a petition put together by someone they can yeah, what they like. Yeah, to, to urge Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority to cancel all plans to close West Kirby Station. And, and somebody's perfectly entitled to do that. That's <coughs> if they put a petition together. The council doesn't own the fire station site, it does own adjacent land. There are no plans to, to alter the provision we have there. We're, with the total investment uh, inside the sports centre of doing the room, We've spent a million and a half pounds over the last year. We do, like lots of other pieces of land the council owns, we do receive approaches from people who would love to do lovely things with all our land. And they, they, they come in and they go out, but there are no plans whatsoever for that. Nor as, nor as Dan has said, have we had any discussions about the future use of their sites should they become redundant. Well, I believe West Kirby, there's nothing coming out of West Kirby now. It all comes from Upton. So we've been led to the base. The, so the, the availability of the West Kirby Fire Appliance as it stands currently is in the order of it's about 70% availability. It is off the run on a number of shifts for the reasons I explained. It's not, right. It differs at various between days. So why days. can you not enlarge Upton Fire Station then, as this gentleman because, has said? Because if we do, it will increase the response times to the West Kirby Station area. Doing and I'm trying to do, and what we're trying to do here by relocating, it comes back to a very simple principle, and again, I, I, I won't, I, I promise, I won't say this again. Got two, can't afford two anymore, can only afford one, you put it in the middle, or as close to the middle as you can get it, because that gives you your best response times. Okay, next question was the gentleman in the blue check shirt. I appreciate there are loads of hands up, and I'm going to try and come to everyone. The blue check shirt, the lady in pink, and then the lady in the white bathroom, and then we'll try and get around to other stuff. So that's all, so. all I want to know is, I know the council have offered this location to do your build on. Well, there's a bit of risk assessment by traffic management. Because these are lanes you're talking about, not roads. Yeah. Like those, if, you, if you went down the foot lane or like that, and you had your sirens going to clear them, they haven't got foot lanes to park on. No, they're not. 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 they are not 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 they're not issues in the first. Like, let me be clear, there is nothing, I keep, like, I'm going to say it, I'll say it one more time and I won't say it again. There is no issue around here with the roads that are any different from any other roads across Merseyside. Fact. Fact. There is no, I don't know, speak to any of the drivers on any of the fire stations, whether it be here, whether it be Liverpool, whether it be Sefton, those the same towns, who have to drive all over the Merseyside. There are no more challenging conditions here than there are anywhere else. What I'm thinking about is if you wanted to move to one side to allow you access to go through, where can they go? But that happens now, that can happen now. Yeah, Those the things can happen. You don't need to. You'll and, you'll you'll and in that. truth, if West Kirby has to close outright, the pump would have to come from Upton, and that would happen then, depending on where they get this. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in, in the lane, we can happen. Mm -hmm. But they could still have to go down them now, and they do it. It happens, that's what they have to do. That's what happens. That's what we It happens now. Right, it happens now, it happens all over Merseyside, and we make our average response 5 minutes 24, which includes places like Hightown, out in Billings and St. Helens, out in Rainford, out in there, But we, we are Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority, we are, and our experience extends beyond the will, which is no different from anywhere else. Right. Okay. I, I say it once and once only. The response issues here are no different from anywhere else. That's the last time I'm going to say it. Okay, so I'd like like more places you could build the fire station. Order, please. Come on, the people are waiting patiently. Put the lady in the pink next. We seem to have spent a lot of time talking about the effects of, God forbid, anybody in West Kirby should ever need a fire station, perhaps. 
Whilst we haven't talked very much at all about the effects, the definite, absolute effects that it will have on the lives of the people of Solvall yeah. Massey, yeah. yeah. we've barely yes. touched on it. We've barely touched on the environment and mental issue. We haven't touched on the fact that it's a heritage site. There are cottages there that have been there 500 years are about to get a fire station in, in straight in front of their house. There are people who wanted to move house who have been told that they'd be getting 10% or 20% of the value knocked off their house. There's people who've just moved here because it was a quiet rural area and have sunk all their savings into their, into their homes to find out that actually mm. it's not the place they thought they were moving into. I can't afford to move. My life will definitely be blighted by this fire station since it's the closest house to the fire station that there is. And yet we've barely touched upon any of those issues. I've heard a lot about people in West Kirby, but quite frankly I want to know how it's going to affect me here. <laughs> Any of that, not to speak exactly. any of that, but, 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 come back to the, uh, the second slide. My role is to recommend the old I am held to account in relation to community safety matters. Community safety, that's what I advise them on. The issues that you raise there, quite legitimately, are issues that a planning committee would need to consider. And they may take the view that the community safety issues I raise are outweighed by your issues. <coughs> assuming, <laughs> assuming that the Fire and Rescue Authority take the decision to pursue the merger proposal. So those, those issues will rightly and quite legitimately be considered by the planning so who, who, who legitimately thought about those issues then in Greasby? When it got thrown yeah, out yeah, of Greasby, exactly. was that planning? No, we, no, never got, we, never got, we never got, we never got to the planning stage at Greasby because the land was withdrawn. We don't own the land. We don't own the land, we don't own the land in Southern Massey, we don't own the land in Greasby. We, we are beholden to other organisations, in this instance, Will, I can't comment, you would have to direct those questions to Will. I can't comment. But is it even going to be Will planning for comment? Because I heard that these things sometimes go to Bristol for planning. Yeah. That would be, yeah. that, that would be if, if it was called in. To, that, that would be almost if it was referred up to the to Department for Community Services. No, 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 that would be David, 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 Yeah, I mean, I can't, as I said before, Should be able to, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. well, 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 what happened was, because Dan said in the presentation, the council's got legal duties towards public safety. I won't go over all the presentations being given. The fire authority came to the council, set down with the rest of the presentation to the one you've heard tonight, and said, We would like you to, we'd like to work you to work with us and, and find a site for a possible option for consultation, which is all this is. And that's what we did. We started identifying three sites in the built away one of which was the site in the centre of Greensby. When that site didn't proceed for a number of reasons, we broadened the search out and we, kept, we included... What we we the Because the leader of the council wanted to make politics out of it we and praise his parliamentary candidate for having it stopped. That's the reason it was withdrawn from Greensby. No other reason. Labour Party leader of the council, politics, get out. Labour Party leader of no, the council no, withdrew no. the land what and praised his parliamentary That's candidate. Not That's not a place. I'm still not answering the lady. She asked why. I'm giving her the answer. Mr. Tom, could you answer my question, please? What reasons? There were a number of reasons. Yeah. What were they? What were they? What were they? But the, 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 the council, council has two buildings on the side. When you looked at it as a council officer, which is what we did, the idea of having a brand new facility, which would have included a library and a community centre, which would have addressed the issues of fire safety for 26,000 people, wouldn't have cost the council a penny. That was definitely an idea worth looking at. Well, that's the idea. As the idea, oh, 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 as the idea oh, developed, and as the feedback came into the consultation meetings, and as we looked at it more closely, and we, we tried to explore it with the community centre, who didn't sign up to it at all, we looked into issues of grant, because we had government grant to extend the library for a children's centre, etc., etc., it became obvious that that scheme was not going to work. It was, that mainly public it was still important, it was still important <laughs> to have the consultation, which you're having now. The council has done no more than cooperate with the fire service to have discussion about fire safety for 26,000 well, people. So are there still local residents who are well, offering up green that one? Well, we have some more because people have had their hands up for a very long time. We started out looking at the sites that weren't green, 
and word green space. And there were three in Greensby. One was a triangular piece of land next to the cricket club, which the council owned, which didn't work because it didn't work because the fire service, well, for understandable reasons, liked to have a site where they could take the fire tender in, drive it in. <laughs> they need a particular site. We looked at a piece of land the council owns next to the second roundabout, not the Sainsbury's one, the one nearer to Greece, which has a dead end spur into a piece of land the council owns. It's leased, it's leased to the Woodland Trust for a hundred years. It's very close to Upton. It didn't give the fire service the location they needed. That left the central Greece beside. When it became apparent that that wasn't going to work, we broadened the search out and we looked at the green belt sites and we presented them to the cat to the fire authority and that's all we've done to have this discussion and debate. As Stan said earlier, the decision will have to be made at the end of the day as to whether that can work in terms of fire safety, whether it can work for people who live there, if all those things will have to be brought together. The council has yet to reach a decision on whether to release the land, it will await the outcome of this consultation and that, that will feed into the, into the report that will go to the council if the fire authority wish to pursue this option because they've got that decision to make. If they do that, if the council, if the fire authority come back to the council and say this is the only option, we would like to pursue this, the council will have to make a decision on whether or not to release the site. If the council did decide to release the site, the fire authority then have to apply for planning permission. And that is an entirely separate process within the council. And that again would address all the issues, the environmental issues and the location issues and the traffic issues as well. See, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be ready civilized and ready to right? I uh, obviously I'm a disabled person, right? And I've got endless going on in my life at the moment, right? Now the thing about it is that the way I see it, and I'm not pointing a finger at anybody, right? I'm not saying anything like that. But the real truth of the matter is, it, and can anybody back me up on this, is that the council, right, have gone into so many um, thousand million pounds of debt, right? And they, it appears to me, this is the way it's coming across to me, and I stand corrected if anybody wants to stand uh, into it correct me, and I will admit that I was wrong. You, as the, uh, the councillors, yeah, are, are selling that land off to the fire people, releasing that land off to the fire people, right? Um, I know they do a good job. Nobody's saying that they don't. We all need the fire, ambulance, police, and all that, yeah? But the, the point about it is, if the council wasn't in um, so many thousands of pounds of debt because they've made wrong decisions, yeah, then the, the, money, the money would be there, you wouldn't be leasing off land, you want to get rid of land. I'll, I'll pick that one up very okay, quickly, fine. because uh, the, the, all the decisions about the, the sites haven't been around the capital value of the site, they have all been based on the operational matters that the chief fire officer has talked through. It's all been about maximising the operational response to the county. Uh, as treasurer, we take no account of the, of the respective values of the sites. So that's a second consideration. May I just say? Let's go. I've got the lady in the couple of ladies in here. A couple of ladies in here. Uh, just before I, I stop for one second, because uh, I know lots of people are quite agitated trying to get in. I am doing my best to get around everyone, but there are lots of people who are trying to get through. These two ladies have been waiting a long time, Judith. Can I just say, I agree, the lady who was there mentioned the environmental issues. Very important. I, mean, I know it was referred to in a meeting by one of the lady councillors as a scrappy piece of land. It's a very important piece of land. But your, your main concern is the response time, isn't it, Dan? Right? Well, trying to get through what other people have said, but it really needs pointing out because I don't think you're taking on board how narrow those lanes are, in parts there are ditches oh, on the sides. I'm sure you could get a fire, fire engine down, but if there's something that's coming the other way, yeah. there are hundreds of cars coming the other way every morning, every evening. So you get to the West Kirby end, there's a primary school. Yeah. Get there at yeah. 9 o'clock in the morning. How does that going to work? The, Not very good for response the, 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 times, and very good for <coughs> days. Unfortunately, though, if West Kirby yeah. closes, then up to they're going to have to do that anyway, aren't they? No. Yeah. 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 Up to will be delayed. If up to will be delayed. Up to will be delayed. If up to remains where it is, if the close rest area, it will undoubtedly increase the response times to West Kirby. The fire appliances, the fire appliances will 
depending on where the incidents are, they have to know them, they have to negotiate those roads now. So I'm going to check that's what you do. Got some, got some firefighters stood outside there. I'd be almost tempted to bring them in and get some of the targets in. We, uh, we have to, they, they will, they will explain what they do is, just, they just tell them like it is, they just tell them like it is. I have no concern. I'm Can I, can I just can I just respond to that? You've got you've got vulnerable people. Then for me to have a fire station. <laughs> Community intervention, community safety, that's why the incidents have come down. number of incidents that across both of the station areas will still be substantially less than 900, which means there will be less than three calls a day. Oh, that's There's not going to be this idea that the, the that we are flying around all over the place. And the ambulance very low well. numbers. We have very low well numbers. Order, order, ladies and gentlemen, I realise you're going to make your points, but I'm going to take the, the lady in grey here. Stand up, please. Is the further you're coming inland, the further you're coming away from Arrow Park Hospital. Now, there's so many vulnerable patients there. All right, there's a lot of patients that can't walk, and, and all of those who have, of us who have worked at the hospital are trained to move patients from one area to the next area, but you actually, Upton Station attend Arrow Park Hospital, I would say, more than any other house on this estate. Yeah. Yeah. Can I make a point there, but it's Arrow Park, it's not the house, is it? It's the hospital. <coughs> and it is probably, it is probably, Arrow Park is probably the safest property, the best managed property. I say that Brian Jones is a former assistant chief, is he heads up fire safety at Arrow Park. It is their responsibility to manage the fire safety and deep safety period across Arrow Park Hospital. That is down to them. They cannot rely on our response. Clearly, we are there to respond to the event of an incident. But their fire risk assessment is their responsibility not something that we need to factor in into the round response times. What we need to be concerned with, what we need to be concerned with, and we are, and, we, and in truth, Burke and Ed will follow Park very quickly as well. We do have the liberty, and we've got fast response to, to Arrow Park. The fact is, Arrow Park has probably has got the greatest amount of coverage of automatic fire detection of passive and active fire intervention measures. It is about the safest building on the world. There is no question about that. Now, now in terms of, and, and if, you know, if, there is, if, if there is an incident there, then clearly we'll be, we will respond very quickly, whether we're here, whether we're up to, indeed even whether we're scared, because we, we don't just send one fire engine to a hospital, certainly, or any oh, large no, building no. That, uh, of, of that nature. So, what I would say is, the primary concern is, is, is yourselves as council taxpayers, there's a much bigger life risk outside of our own park that doesn't or isn't subject to the sort of regulatory 
um, regime than Alan Park is. Because for any one of us in our houses, we're not subject to any fire safety legislation. <coughs> the uh, fundamental premise here is the Englishman's home is his castle. You can do whatever you like in your house. Which is why it's so important to, in the fire sense that we maintain those fast response times to the life risk outside of the big buildings, the likes of Alan Park, even things like Tamay Road Terminal, another real big. So I, can, yeah, I can repeat that to when we go to the fire, our fire drill at the Absolutely. hospital. Absolutely, because that is their that is their job within the, the management within Alan Park is to ensure that people are drilled because with the best will in the world, the only the only mechanism we have to influence behaviour within somebody's house is through a home fire safety check and even with, with the best will in the world we can't get in to see everyone as much as we try. But where we have got in, that's why we've reduced the number of incidents. So we're all equal for our own fires then, in other words. Well, what we're saying is, is if I understand the question you're asking is what we're trying to do is achieve the most equitable levels of response across Merseyside. That's what we're trying, that's what the merger proposal, whether they're here, St. Helens or in Nosey, that's what the merger proposals are all about. It is trying to achieve the best level of response, because that is what we know is important. Okay, next we've got the gentleman in blue, the lady in the purple top of the second. I'll just very briefly, I've lived around this quite a while, and I used to play on the fields where you're actually going to build this. Since that bridge was built, the new bridge, that land's actually very unstable and it floods now everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And there's now a massive pond right behind it which contained probably as much water as two Olympics flat size swimming pools. That wasn't there ten years ago. So if you're gonna build that, I would say check the land out. My other main point is if you had all the money in the world, would you want to keep West Kirby and up the new pool? And the answer is yes. The economy will get better. Why do we have to do this knee-jerk reaction? The conversation now be out soon. We'll have a Labour government. Taxes will go up. Yes, I, I, I think you've, you've responded, <laughs> please can we, can we uh, if it's all possible, <coughs> please can we just, this is not a political meeting. The first, the first one is the land, and also, is having two actually better than merging for one? Is it, is it just a fiscal thing, in which case that may change in the future? Let, let me be absolutely, if I, if I answer the question, let me be absolutely clear, I am, I am on the record as I've given evidence to the DCLG, the Department of Communities and Local Government Public Care Select Committee, around the, the issues around the financial challenges that the Fire Rescue Service face from a community safety perspective. For the avoidance of any doubt, I would absolutely not ever recommend the closure of any fire stations because clearly that is, it, it, it is totally contrary to everything that I am, the, 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 it, it's contrary to everything that, that I and my colleagues are about. The fact that the matter is, is that our budget now does not sustain 28 fire engines, normal firefighters to maintain 28 fire engines, and nor will it in the future. Well, so, be because, because in, I think it's fair to say, again, I will make a, I will make a statement of fact. So I, this is absolutely in no way as a political comment. The, the financial settlement for this year, there is no political party has ever indicated that they would do anything to change that. And that's a matter of fact. So I think that that is a, let me be clear, it's the last comment I'm going to make in, in that regard. In terms of the, I suppose, coming back to your, to, to, to the, the site itself, the, there has been a, 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 a game's better place to actually describe, or potentially call on my colleagues over to be right, to describe. There has been a, an initial environmental survey call on the team, which which is what's what, not been done yet. Sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, not. But we, we, we would at some point we would do that. Which which in and which would pick those issues up. But that would be, suppose. What we're, what we're looking to do in the first instance, just to be, be, be sure that everyone, there is no done deal here. This is the public consultation will run its course 
I think we'll get reports of back to the Fan Rescue Authority. And if the Fan Rescue Authority, well, largely would only be repeat what David has said, there is a substantial process to go through thereafter around planning, and, and, and I, I have no expertise whatsoever in that area. If we save this where to go ahead, when would you envisage it to be? Save it where? Yeah. And if I see it should be planning to build it, how long does it take? You? If, if we take, if, if yes. we take Western, <laughs> so Heighton and Western as the, uh, the, the example, authority approval last October, we, we are at the position now probably to seek the pre-planning application advice. The advice from officers in Nosley is that it will likely go to planning with the planning committee in September and it would take at least a year to build. So over in Nosley, over in Prescott, probably not going to see a new fire station until 2016, sort of back end if you like. Which of course brings me back to, and it's a point that's been raised before, the challenge I have as the Chief Fire Officer is here and now. Because I am running out of people, but well, I've ran out of money to, to, we are using reserves to avoid compulsory redundancies which, you know, is, as I believe is right proper. The fact is, our firefighters are retiring, we can't replace them in the 